of Sports and Center here on the show. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot to talk about. Uh, we're not going to bore you. Um, it's weekend already, and uh, you know you know what happens during the weekend. It's um, they resume. Um, you know the league matches will resume over the weekend already. We have um, some matches already being played, and uh, we're going to go over. Uh, some of the matches, the weekend matches uh, that will be played this weekend. The Italians, we are the Spanish La Liga, the English Premier League, the uh, German Bundesliga, all in one. It promises to be an interesting one. I would say stay tuned and uh, you know watch till the very end. And joining me on the show um, today, I have Eric Undaxon. Eric, it's good to have you on the show. Yeah, it's always good to be here to talk about sport and it's the weekend, so it's about the weekend. Yeah. Amazing matches yeah. coming up tomorrow and we'll see how well we'll talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Interesting, interesting matches from Italy uh, down to the uh, EPL. Uh, as a matter of fact, EPL, uh, there's a super <laughs> Sunday match that we played this weekend. I'm sure you all uh, you know, are aware of the, the match that I'm talking about. I know you know it, but then I'm not going to unveil it. I will take a short break <coughs> right now, and when I come back, we'll dive straight into the center of the action. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. It's still uh, Sports Center right here on Fracosia TV. Uh, make sure uh, you actually follow us on Twitter and uh, you know try and subscribe to our YouTube channel as uh, this is where uh, you'll be able to watch us for now. Subsequently, we we'll promise you we're going to take it beyond uh, social media and we'll take it <coughs> down to your various houses. And let's start off. Uh, from uh, the Italian Serie A, uh, let's take a look at the fixtures for the weekend. Uh, first match of the day is going to be between uh, Inter Milan and uh, Bologna. Uh, Juventus will take on uh, Torino. Uh, Genoa will play against AC Milan. Uh, Monza will play Salernitana. Uh, Fioncinone uh, against uh, Hellas Verona. We have uh, Lazio uh, playing against Atalanta and uh, Cagliari against uh, AS Roma. These are Sunday uh, matches, uh, so to say. We also have uh, uh, Napoli uh, taking on uh, Fiorentina. So, Eric, uh, let's take a look at these games, Inter Milan and uh, Bologna. <coughs> uh, defending champions of the um, Italians, we are you know, played in the final of the Champions League last season. And uh, just when we thought that you know, um, there's going to be a drop, because of you know uh, the fact that they lost Onana, they lost even lost uh, Lukaku as well. Uh, it, but it seems like you know Inter are not letting down their guards. Tomorrow uh, they take on uh, Bologna. What are we expecting <coughs> in this uh, game between Inter and Bologna? Uh, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting game. Uh -huh. <coughs> Considering the fact that Inter Milan Inter Milan are high flying. At the moment, yeah. sitting on the top of the lock uh, with 18 points for yeah. seven games, and you have Bologna sitting on the eighth position. Yeah. Uh, but one thing you, yeah, we all expect Inter Milan to come out doing well, and you have um, uh, uh, Laturo Latinos. firing from all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, he scored four goals. In yeah, last their game. last game, yeah. so it's like they are like more of showing their intent in this season. Yeah. After finishing second place in the last season, uh, they lost to Napoli, mm -hmm. who happens to be the winners of the league last season. Now they have they are bouncing back yeah. because it's, it was like a head-to-head -head battle last season, mm -hmm. and unfortunately for them. 
they ended up playing the second video. But this time around, they are showing uh, like what they are about to about doing. But one thing you should know about Bologna is they are, let me put it this way, they are always uh, ready to spoil your show. Yeah. They are good with that. When, we, if we, when they are playing you at home or away, anything can happen. Yeah. They can end up peeping you in your own home or getting a draw, getting a, like sharing the point with you because they are also a good side and sitting on the eighth position with, with uh, 10 points, that means they have eight points in between them. Yeah. But sometimes your position, the position really don't matter when it comes to football. I think it boils down to the preparation and the state of mind of the players, yeah. uh, like during on, on the match day. So it there will be a lot of fireworks. I know Martinez will like to continue from where he left. Yeah, uh, and looking at him, you know, Inter Milan is a good team. Yeah. That's why, that's why they find losing some key players. Yeah, but you see, they are still they are still doing well. That's the quality of a, a good uh, team. A good team, no matter who. Uh, leaves the club yeah. or what happens you see they always have a core a core of players that will always get results and that's one thing I see in Inter Milan but not taking a, anything away from Bologna I expect them to put up a good fight so yeah. it might end up being a very close game all right let's look at um, Torino Juventus Genoa AC Milan three big matches tomorrow yeah in this perspective of how you look at it first uh, when you look at football now it's quite easy for you to say okay this is a small team uh you know on the on the surface yeah but then when they get to the field of play <coughs> things always turn out differently yeah and when you look at these matches you can say to a certain degree torino juventus a big game yeah especially because of you know what's happening with juventus at the moment not so informed and you know genoa ac milan as well so what are we expecting in these uh, two games yeah uh is still they are still picking up their pieces so that to get back to the pinnacle of Italian football because for the I think past two seasons they didn't really play up to expectation. Mm. They've been struggling, trying to pick their, p their pieces and they are lying in the fourth place at the moment. And you have Torino uh, at the playing the the eleven they are in the eleven position yeah. with nine points and you have yeah, UV with with 14 points. Yeah. So they have five points in between. So you see, there are not much difference. difference. And at any time, like playing uh, Torino against uh, Juventus. against Juventus, is always uh, it's always an interesting game. Yeah. Even though most of the time uh, Juventus like kind of get the edge, but they always. It's either Juventus are winning or yeah. you see them playing a draw. Yeah. Because looking at their life, last five uh, fixtures, yeah. Juventus won by four goals to two, a goal to nil, they drew 1-1, one, one. Yeah. Juventus won another a, a goal to nil and they played 2-2. Two, two. So you see, it's either you uh, they are playing, Juventus is winning Winning's with a very close like, margin. margin or to really force them to play a draw. Yeah. So you know that this is another interesting game to look out for. And all eyes will be on UV. They are playing in front of their their fans. So it's expected of them to to like continue with the 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 performance, yeah. like the community like the momentum to get back to the pinnacle of the game. But Torino will not just sit down and watch. Yeah. It's going to be like a very close game. So I know this course is still going to be it's going, going to be very close. Yeah. You might not end up not seeing so many goals in that game mm -hmm. because that's how you really see goals in their games. Um, it's going to be a good game. Go on. Look for it. And okay, you want let's to? let's talk about some other games. Yeah. Uh, another big game on Sunday last year against Atlanta. Atlanta not. Uh, really, the Atlanta we know. Uh, yeah. We have our own um, Ademola Lukman playing yeah. with Atlanta. Last season he was on fire, but it seems like you know he lost that fire. You know the very moment he kick started this season. And then we have Napoli as well playing against Fiorentina and uh, Roma 
against uh, Cagliari. So <coughs> what are we expecting uh, in these games? Roma, Cagliari, Lazio, Atlanta, Napoli, Fuentina. With Napoli, we know uh, the problem with Victor Simeon, you know, it has been sorted already. They came out and said, okay, uh, we have to move on. And the mm. club already, you know, apologized. And uh, right now, um, you know, it's all about winning. And you saw what happened in the midweek. They lost in the uh, Champions League at home uh, to Real Madrid. So, what are we expecting in these three games? Uh, looking at uh, Lazio. Yeah. Lazio has not been the Lazio we used to know. Yeah. They have been a shadow of themselves. Like, you see them sitting on the 14th position on the log. Yeah. It's not, it's not encouraging sitting at that position. Yeah. And, but Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta too, like you rightly said, Atlanta is, is not the Atlanta we used to know. Yeah. Because uh, Ademar Lukman, last season he came up very strong. Yeah. He was firing, he was going head to head with uh, Osimhen. Yeah. But then, I don't know what happened that quenched the fire that he came up with. Now they're sitting down on the sixth position with 13 points from seven games. And you have Lazio with seven points from seven games. Yeah. So against the 21 points they should have got it if they won all their matches. Yeah. So you know that from that you know that their performance is not so good this season. Mm -hmm. And this is these are two teams trying to get themselves back. Even though Atlanta did uh, well last season, yeah. but Lazio Lazio is been like up and on for them. Even you see the thing, it continues down to this season, mm -hmm. having just seven points for seven, seven years, which is not so encouraging. Yeah. And now, playing at home to, to Atlanta, yeah. uh, to me, it's just, it's not going to be the, so different, like, because Lazio is still trying to get their rhythm. Yeah. And Atlanta, but you know one thing in football, in, in a way you can see, uh, we might end up seeing Lazio sprinkling uh, surprise. surprise. Yeah. But because looking at their uh, last five games, Lazio won two of the last five games. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta won one and they drew two. Yeah. So you see, Lazio have an edge. It's something that something like this with uh, with some kind of features like this. Yeah. Even if a team are on a losing streak. Yeah. They get to meet a team that they know how to beat the team mm -hmm. like any day. It's like they have a team's number. Yeah. They just dial it and you see it happen. So it could be one of those games where Lazio will end up having an edge okay. over Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then uh, Napoli, we expect Napoli to continue okay. from where they left it okay. because they, they, they are playing against Florentina and they are playing at home. Yeah. Uh, although sometimes if you look at, okay, if you look at uh, the game they lost against Lazio, it was at home. Yeah. And it's, those are the kind of games I'm talking about. Yeah. Napoli, high-flying Napoli, losing to Napoli, yeah, yeah. to uh, Lazio. Lazio. Mm -hmm. And at home, losing at home. So you see those kind of games. Some teams, they know how to beat the other teams. And Napoli, Fiorentina is Napoli all the way. Okay. And yeah. Uh, then the other game, another big game that will Roma, run. Roma and yes. uh, Roma and Cagliari. Yeah, Roma for me uh, is one team that you know they've not really uh, played up uh, expectation this season, considering the, you know the kind of players that, that they brought in. They brought in, I mean, they brought in Fredes, brought in Lukaku. Uh, there's still uh, Belotti there. There's uh, uh, yeah, this guy from Juventus, uh, Dybala is there. There's a uh, Georgino Wijnaldum, you know, couple with you know the likes of El Sharawi. All these guys are still in the team. But then, uh, for me, with the crop of players that they, they were able to bring into the team this season, I will still say that this um, Roma team is underachieving. But I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, just to add to uh, what you said, you forgot to mention the the. The person handling the team, yeah. the coach. Jose Mourinho. Yes, with all this crop of players mm. and Jose Mourinho, but still the result is like 
is not forthcoming. Yeah. So you tend to wonder what is happening. Is it the philosophy of the coach? The players are yet to understand the philosophy, or is it just it's not just blending, or the co the coach uh, has fallen short of tactics, like the tactics, and like you just don't know what is happening because with these players, yeah. uh, El Sharawi, uh, when I don't like, do they have wonderful players. Mm -hmm. That are still vibrant in the game, yeah. but then the results are not forthcoming. I really don't know what could be the issue because when you see players like the team, uh, like this, having this kind of players, you know they should be playing well. But then it's just the, it's just the start of the season. Probably we we'll get to see them pick up, like maybe, or oh, it could be the synergy in the team. Maybe yeah. they've not yet blended. Well, because you know, playing with new, having new players around, you need to know how this one plays, how this one gets into, what position it gets into. Mm -hmm. It will be easier. So the blending could come in the middle of the season, yeah. and you see them having a very fantastic run from the middle of the season down to the end of the season. So you, uh, one cannot just write, write them off. But at this moment, position where they are, they were playing against Cagliari, which happens to be the last team on the lock. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be a win. It should be a, uh, uh, I won't say an easy win, but it should be a comfortable a win for Yeah, for comfortable Roma. game for Roma. Yeah. They should win this, uh, win the game. But then, like you said, there's no big team factor in football again. Yeah. If, it's, you ha if you happen to have a bad day, mm -hmm. that's all. Mm -hmm. And the other team, just a little bit of luck. You see the result change, but on paper and based on the caliber of players uh, parade, that will be paraded, mm -hmm. Roma should uh, have the edge. Okay, uh, let's uh, be brief on this one yeah, because we're going to, uh, uh, we don't have uh, quite enough time. It's actually going to be an abridged version, and uh, this time around we move to La Liga. Uh, for La Liga, we have a uh, surprise package. Uh, Girona playing against Cadiz, early kickoff tomorrow. We have uh, Real Madrid against Osasuna, Mallorca against uh, Valencia, Sevilla against uh, uh, Rayo Vallecano. We have uh, Villarreal against uh, Las Palmas, Atletico Madrid will take on uh, Real Sociedad. Uh, Laves will take on Real Betis, Getafe will play against uh, Celta Vigo, while uh, Granada uh, and Barcelona will finish this weekend's uh, games. As far as the Spanish La Liga is uh, concerned, now looking at the La Liga this season, it's actually quite you know surprising. Yes, you expect, uh, you always expect Madrid and Barcelona to be high up there every time you know um, La Liga is being mentioned. But yeah. one thing that is surprising everybody this season is Girona. Girona, um, you know, at one point where I think it was a hundred percent record for them, not until last weekend when they lost to Real Madrid. So. As far as the uh, log is concerned, the leadership has always been changing from Madrid at one point mm. with the 100% record to uh, Barcelona and then uh, Girona took over for some time till you know, Madrid you know, got that uh, victory over uh, Girona. So for the Spanish La Liga this <coughs> weekend, you know, pick uh, some of the important matches on what we should be expecting uh, from these games because I, for now, uh, Girona, uh, you will say it's an important team in the Spanish La Liga mm -hmm. by virtue of the position that they occupy. Mm. So yeah, sitting, sitting uh, at number three on the log, uh, a lot is expected from them because of the way they started. Yeah, I know from the beginning of the season, uh, they, they, are, they are far from being a favorite. Mm -hmm. So whatever Girona is doing now is a kind of surprise package to everybody. So. But with what they have done, like I expect them, their game against Cardiff, I, I expect them to get at least a draw if they don't get to win the match. Mm -hmm. And why I expect them to get, get a draw is because of their head-to-head. -head. If you look at their last five games, mm -hmm. uh, they played, they have two wins apiece and a draw. And, but one thing that I, that I'm giving Girona 
uh, it's um, like a slight age over Cardis because Cardis is not playing very very, yeah. very well, not playing so fine. And Girona is on the on the high on side. The high side. Mm -hmm. So but one thing you check from the last fixtures, they both they both won their home games. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to put into consideration. They both won their home games. The losses came away when they play when they, when they both teams playing away. Yeah. But looking at this, and it's the beginning of the season, one team is playing very well, I mean, that's why I expect it could go, uh, go down as a draw. Yeah. So, but I expect Girona, if I see Girona winning, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. because of their performance, the performance they have in this uh, season. And Real Madrid, we can remember Real Madrid or Sasuna, it should be a win for Real Madrid. They should pick up from where they left against Girona. Yeah. And uh, you have Mayuka playing Valencia. Mm -hmm. That game is a very tricky game. It could go anywhere yeah. because both teams are like more of trying to get back, get themselves back. Yeah. You have Valencia sitting on the ninth position. Mayuka sitting on, at, uh, on number fifteen, number sixteen, yeah. which is not so like both teams have not been so impress impressive. So it's a kind of more of redemption for them. Yeah. Each team is trying to get back to uh, their winning ways. Valencia was one of them. Valencia was a big team, yeah. one of the big teams when it comes to the Spanish football and even the world football because yeah. they've done so well in the Champions League and other European competitions. So, and we have Sevilla with Rafa with Valentano. Sevilla have, I think, you could see they have gotten them uh, themselves like. They are trying to get, get themselves together, even though you know they have not played so well. Yeah, it was like the ending of last season for the mid last season, towards uh, the ending. Mm -hmm. They've had so many bad results, yeah. and even at now, Sevilla are still lying on the 15th position. How surprising that would be after seven games, they only have seven points. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like not uh, an impressive season for them the way they wanted it to be, yeah. And, for the past, last five games they played, Sevilla were, were, they were able to win two games. Real Valcano won one, and they had two draws. And the one Real Valcano won was at Sevilla's backyard. Yeah. So you see, the game uh, tomorrow, you you cannot uh, ride Real Valcano. You can ride them, ride them off mm -hmm. because they are also uh, very, very equal to the tax, even though they had, and if you check, most of their, uh, their last five matches, yeah. you see that they won one and they drew four. So, you know, they still have something in, in them. Mm -hmm. They just need to have those spark in the front because as far as I'm concerned, the back line are keeping it tight at the back. Yeah. That's why they, you see them uh, just having a draw. And not that the forward are not firing, but I think maybe they have to now kind of find a way to swim and not get wet, you understand? Yeah. So that they can dive into it, come out and still come out clean. clean. Yeah. So that's what they need. So it's going to be an interesting game. So we would like to bounce back to move from that position because it's not so not so good. Uh, even in yeah. their last game against Barcelona, it was so close. It took yeah. a, you know, last minute on goal from uh, Sergio Ramos uh, for Baka to uh, you know, nick that win yeah. uh, against um, Sevilla. Now, let's uh, actually wrap this uh, uh, La Liga up, you know, with um, Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona against uh, Granada. Uh, Barcelona escaping with a one new victory over Sevilla the last time. Mm -hmm. And um, tomorrow is, um, on Sunday, right, it's going to be against Granada. But one question I would like to ask, uh, so far so good, how would you rate the performance of uh, Baka coach? Um, you know, uh, Zabi, uh, since he took over the club and, you know, where he's taking them to at this particular point in time. And what are we expecting in that game tomorrow? Okay. <coughs> uh, if, in my own opinion, I will, I will say uh, he's doing well in the sense that, you know, uh, when he took, uh, took up the job and, you know, what happened, the, the uh, occurrences, the, the happenings in the team, around the team, yeah. and like, 
having to stick to a particular kind of play, set of particular set of players, yeah. try to make something out of it. And you see, last season they came close. Mm -hmm. uh, they did uh, even they won the La Liga. Yes, they won the La Liga last yes, season. Yes, last season. Yes, yeah. thank you. They won the La Liga, mm -hmm. and they, they, I think they, they they got to the semi final of the cup or, or, the or Europa, something. Europa League. The, when they the semi final of the Europa, I think they yes. lost to. Uh, Etrin Frank Thoughts or there was the December. So, players. like, looking at these performances, <laughs> nobody expected them to win the league last That's season. It, yeah. Because, looking at that, and it was a season where we all said if Barcelona didn't get to win anything, yeah. it would be a big problem for them. <laughs> but then, this man, uh, like, stepped up into the party and was able to win, was able to win the league, which is so impressive. And getting to the semi final of the uh, Europa is another impressive uh, performance. Uh -huh. And looking at this team, they are in the second position, yeah. just I think a point behind Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. And they have, they, they've scored the highest goal in the league so far. So looking at this, I think one would be fair to say that he has done, yeah, he's doing well at the moment. Yeah. Even though we expect, yeah, we still expect more from him. But considering that, I, I would say he's still building, building the team. Yeah. So probably, like when he gets to, it's a team that he has been part of as a player, <laughs> and now it's serving in the capacity of being a coach. So you know that the philosophy has been with him, and it's all about the implementation. And we know, uh, we know how good he was when during his playing time, and we expect to see more of those kind of players like him, molding players like him, and even better players mm -hmm. to come up in the, in the ranks, because they are good with that. So, to me, he has done fairly well. Okay. Like, in my own opinion. Okay. All right. Uh, he has done well uh, as well, to me, if you ask me, you know, considering the position uh, that they were before he came in, uh, considering also the fact that he has to you know, um, work with a certain budget. As a matter of mm. fact, some players had to, you know, um, reduce their wages, their wages to yeah. make sure that, you know, uh, some other clubs, some other players yeah, can actually, fine. you know, join in. And so mm. far, so good. They've done a good job. Uh, recently, they announced uh, profits uh, in, in terms of, you know, uh, the businesses that they've conducted. So, a good one yeah. uh, for uh, Zappi and the FC uh, Barcelona. It is on that note. Uh, we'll go on a very short break and uh, when we come back, we'll try to look at uh, the remaining three leagues, uh, the uh, French Ligue 1, the English Premier League and the German Bundesliga. Don't do it away, we'll be right back. Back a still sports center right here on Cracosia TV. And moving on, let's actually uh, we're going to look at the remaining three leagues um, in conjunction, so to say. We'll talk about them together. Uh, the, as far as the German Bundesliga is a concern, uh, we'll look at um, tomorrow. Uh, Borussia Dortmund will take on uh, Union Berlin, Augsburg against. Uh, Times that we we'll see uh, RB Leipzig, uh, you know, not so not doing so bad so far as far as the uh, German Bundesliga is concerned. We we'll play against uh, Bochum. We have a uh, Stuttgart against uh, Wolfsburg. We have a uh, Werder Bremen against uh, Offenheim. And then on Sunday we have a uh, Bayer Leverkusen against uh, Cologne. Bayern will play Freiburg. Eton uh, Freiburg will play Hondenheim. Uh, 1846. And now let's uh, look at uh, the uh, French League on, uh, so to say. We have uh, earlier today not, you know, uh, winning 
uh, in their own uh, game. And uh, let's look at um, tomorrow's uh, fixtures. We have a match against uh, Nice. Rams will play against Monaco. We have uh, Marseille against uh, Le Havre. We have uh, Brest against Toulouse. Lyon will take on uh, Laurent. We have uh, Montpellier against uh, Clermont. We have uh, Lens. Uh, you know, smarting from that 2-1 win over Arsenal in the UEFA Champions League, uh, taking on uh, Lille Metropole. And then we'll finish to on Sunday uh, talking about the Spanish La Liga with a match between uh, René and Paris Saint-Germain. Now, let's go to the English Premier League. Tottenham Hotspur uh, will start tomorrow against a Luton Town, Burnley against a Chelsea, Everton against a Bournemouth, Fulham against a Sheffield United, Manchester United will take on a Brentford, a Crystal Palace against a Nottingham Forest, we have a Brighton Ho and Hove Albion against a Liverpool, we have a West Ham United against Newcastle United, Wolverhampton Wanderers against Aston Villa, and the big match of the weekend, the match that we, you know, actually uh, we're talking about uh, before we went on that break, is a match between Arsenal and Manchester City. So this is the match I want us to talk about. Arsenal, Manchester City. Arsenal lost to Lens in the Champions League, you know, during the midweek. While, you know, for Manchester City, it was a different, you know, result altogether. Last weekend, Manchester City lost to Wolverhampton Wanderers, while Arsenal it was a dog for us now. It was a dominant performance for them. A four new win against Bournemouth. So, what are we expecting um, in this game between Manchester City and Arsenal on Sunday? Where are we going to see Arsenal bounce back from that shock, shocking defeat uh, to Lens in the UEFA Champions League, or is it going to be Manchester City bouncing back, you know, from also that defeat that they got, their first defeat of the season, as a matter of fact, against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, I it's going to be an interesting game but you know we talk about team having a particular team's number yeah. uh, we, I think this is the case in this in this match because yeah. Man City always have Arsenal's number yeah. it's all about dialing the number I don't think it's going to be much different maybe the loss Arsenal had uh, mid, uh, midweek it's it's a kind of introduction to what will happen. <laughs> what to expect. Like, uh, what yeah. you expect in the Man City. Man City always have a way to beat Arsenal. But, you know, one thing that uh, was quite uh, shocking and surprising was uh, Arsenal were able to beat Man City to the charity shield, mm -hmm. so which is a good way to start the season. Mm -hmm. so it's like they only, they are, they are, they've already gotten a trophy yeah. to start the season with. And... Having that kind of mindset and what makes them put up the good performance, they had to, they had to come back from a goal down to beat Man City uh, in penalties in the charity community shield. We probably could see that happening if they really put themselves together and uh, from the loss they had in, the, in midweek. But to me, if you ask me and all things being equal, Man City was different a week to beat Arsenal. Okay, let me tell you a funny story about that game. We talked about um, the charity shield. Uh, I remember, I think I was, I came to your place and I was on my way home. And the last time, I, when I checked the last time, it was, I think, around 98 minutes plus or so, Manchester City scored. Yes. So I didn't bother to check because it was very close to yeah. know, when the match will, yeah. will end. So on Reaching to where I was going, someone asked me, who won the community <laughs> shield? And I told them it was Manchester City that won the community shield. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to my greatest surprise, when we tuned into uh, to the to television, I saw a snap player celebrating. I was like, what happened? What happened? It, yeah. it, it was actually uh, quite funny, you know, the way it happened that very day. So, yes, <laughs> because when Manchester City scored, yeah. I was expecting, when I said, oh, it's as usual. Yeah. So it was the same thing that happened. Yeah. I now left. I was anybody. Ah, Man City. Man City. I actually told somebody Man City won yeah. because somebody quite asked us. Ah, Man City won the, mm -hmm. the match. Just I was just on the reading the news yeah. and I saw that Arsenal won the community. I was like, how? Oh. 
How did it happen? Yeah. There was this magic of because, because it was so fast, <laughs> 98 minutes plus four or something <laughs> thereabout. And it was so very close to when the match was supposed to yeah. end. So I so actually thought how? you know the match ended and Manchester City won. So I was so <laughs> confident, so full of myself. And I was telling people that, you know, Arsenal, you know, uh, Manchester City, City won <laughs> against Arsenal. So it was actually a very you know funny story. Now let's uh, wrap it up now uh, with the German Bundesliga. Um, it's not going smoothly for Bayern this season. Uh, they're playing Freiburg um, on Sunday. So, what's your take on this game uh, between Bayern and Freiburg? Are you, what are we expecting? Uh, Freiburg, Freiburg is another is another stubborn team. Uh, I'm playing against uh, Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich are playing at home. So, and I believe Bayern Munich will have we will carry the lead. They have just they have four points in between them. Freiburg have ten points, and Bayern Munich are having fourteen points, but not not far from just two points from the league uh, toppers, mm -hmm. uh, Leverkusen. Yeah. So it's just two points between them. And but one thing, like with uh, Bayern Munich, you can't take it away from them. It might be going not so well with them. It happened last season. Yeah. And on the last day, that was when they won, won the league. Mm -hmm. I will, in my own opinion, I will say, uh, was it Bayern Munich? Oh no, uh, Borussia, was it Borussia Dortmund or Leverkusen that was? It was Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund. Was Borussia Dortmund was supposed to, yeah. yeah so Bayern Bayern and Bayern. Borussia Dortmund were playing at home. <laughs> it's all about just picking, winning your match yeah. and having the league. But I, they threw the league away, the chance away, and uh, Bayern, Bayern, Bayern Munich won, won the league. Mm -hmm. So now coming, I mean, they are not playing so well, but they are not far from the table toppers, which you see that okay, you see that it's not as if they are the only team having a tough time mm -hmm. in the uh, start of the league. Most of the teams are having that kind of uh, tough time. Mm -hmm. Even the fry, we are, like the fry box, they are not having it so well, mm -hmm. going so well for them. But Bayern Munich playing at home, even though home and away does not really count in football mm -hmm. these days. A team can just come to your home and keep you at home and, and get the maximum three point mm -hmm. go back to their but like I've always said it's all about the mindset and the state of mind of the players and what is happening. It's more than to what the camp looks like, what is happening in the camp. But when you have the right uh, boost and everything being equal. Yeah. Bayern Munich should win the match. Looking at the kind of couple of players they have, we have Harry Kane here, which is uh, he's the top scorer at the moment, mm -hmm. and he he's holding his own. Showing that he's a very classic uh, striker. So having him, we have Sunny, we have uh, the likes of uh, what's it? Gnabry. Yes, the name, so the name has come there's, there's Gnabry, there's yes, Joshua Kimmich, yes. uh, you know, uh, so Jamal Musiala. All these are you know, top players, world class but, players. Yeah. World class players. But when you, when, and when you see a team have with this kind of players and still they're not getting the desired result, you tend to wonder what was wrong. Because on a very good day, this Bayern team will be will win all their matches with not less than three goals. Mm -hmm. But then this is football. And anything can happen. Yeah. I, I expect them to come out smoking. All right. So it's on this note, uh, we wrap it up on today's edition of our Sports Center. Our time is fast spent, you know, just like I said uh, before uh, we started the show. This is going to be an abridged version. So on Monday, uh, we we'll promise we'll be here. And we'll serve you the results uh, from you know uh, these matches. I will point out you know some of these matches that you know we talked about you know that we predicted uh, so far. The match between Bayern, you know, we talked about Barcelona. We talked about Arsenal as well uh, against Manchester City. You know, with Manchester City, um, you know, according to Eric, holding Arsenal's number. You know, it is, as a matter of fact. They know how to deal with Arsenal, except for that community yes. show. Too. <laughs> so, <laughs> we look forward to uh, meeting you guys right here on Monday. I want to thank Eric uh, for joining me on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me.
It's uh, always a pleasure to be here. All right. Also to thank the production crew uh, for doing a good job behind the scene. I remain Austin Arame. We'll see you again next time.